I think this is something we're going to probably stick on a lot is, is this direction of causality, because I think that's something maybe I'm, I still struggle to kind of really, I'm sure there's a lot to say about it in, in uh, your worldview. And, and also something I think that's, um, that's interesting is you said like, of course, mental events influence each other, right? And to the average person or to just any human observing their mind, that feels trivial, that feels obvious, right? That you, you think of something and it triggers a memory and if that triggers an emotion. Um, in the kind of mainstream science way of thinking about things, um, it's quite radical to suppose, to argue that, that there's any causality in consciousness, right? Um, I think, um, again, I mean, it's gonna be hard to unpack this because we're dealing with two, two such different, um, different worldviews, but in the, in the materialist worldview, or the, I should say maybe the mainstream scientific worldview, you would have something like, if I feel hungry, my mood is low and I imagine dinner and I smell, I imagine the smell of dinner as well. In the, my kind of way of thinking about, the scientific way of thinking about the world, your blood glucose is low, that triggers physiological processes and the direction of causality, all those things kind of arise at the same time. They seem, there's a logic to them, they, they seem associated, but mental events don't, call, don't have causal power. And our understanding of causal power is, is very much one of physics, right? Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe that's a good place to go next in terms of your thinking about. about that. I think you're correct. That's what uh, mainstream materialism entails. It says uh, experiential states have no causal powers, no causal efficacy. Um, many materialists who do not really understand what materialism is, although they defend it, uh, they disagree with this. But that's because their understanding of materialism is skewed. They, they didn't really uh, um, examine uh, the implications of that worldview. I have one particular person in mind who is a, who is a particularly <laughs> good example uh, of this. Um, the direction of causality is only important when you are thinking in dualist terms. And a lot of materialists think in dualist terms, even though materialism is a monist in metaphysics. Uh, it has no room for dualism, but that's how people think for, for some reason. They think that mind is somehow distinct from matter uh, 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 and mind therefore cannot have causal efficacy because if, it's, if it is distinct, it cannot influence matter. And then you have this whole discussion about, you know, is the level of glucose in your blood that makes you feel hungry when, it, you know, when, when it's detected by your brain, whatever. Forget dualism. There is no dualism. That's my position. Uh, um, the, the glucose in your blood, uh, the cells in your body, uh, uh, your blood, your heart, all the physiological processes that present themselves to observation by scientists, they are the extrinsic appearance of inherently mental processes that are not available to introspect introspection. They're beyond uh, the, the reach of introspection, so to say, but they are mental, they are out there. So uh, for me, it's a red herring, this discussion about the arrow of causality. Uh, it, it's a play of mind with mind. Causality is in mind. Um, of course, we can go deeper in that discussion and, say, and think, you know, ask, is there really causality or, or are these just correlations that are part part of a much broader pattern and because we only see a little bit of the pattern we think in terms of causality but let's know that we don't need to go that far uh, um, to, to make a step forward uh, we have to abandon this unexamined implicit dualist way of thinking about things for the sake of materialism and idealism uh, <laughs> because both do not have uh, room for it <laughs>